So, you know, I have to say this for this particular story right here. This has to be the most just ironic thing. I mean, just the irony of this story. And I say this because like it ties directly into um, my upload that was earlier today, you know, with the kid that was just completely just being just dumb, just being just utterly dumb, you know, singing and just disrespecting and running on top of people's tombstones for entertainment and just chasing clout. You know, it, it just it was just dumb. But I'm just going to go ahead and read this title. It says, as reported by CNN News, Parkland shooting survivor says Harvard rescinded his admission over racial slurs he made two years ago. So it says Kyle Kashuv. Kashuv, I, I hope I really hope that that's how you say it. I mean, I just butchered people's names. But it says he disclosed the rescinding Monday in a Twitter thread acknowledging that he and classmates then 16 made abhorrent racial slurs in digital messages almost two years ago in an effort to be as extreme and shocking as possible so pretty much just just going for shock value for attention to just have people talking about you it just it's okay just just being stupid so so he wrote an apology for his remarks and posted a screenshot of what appears to be a June 3rd letter from Harvard Dean of Admissions William Fitzsimmons rescinding his admission. So it says, okay, we're going to go through his Twitter a little bit. So it says, Harvard deciding that someone can grow, especially after a life altering event like the shooting is deeply concerning. If any institution should understand growth, it's Harvard which is looked to as the pinnacle of higher education despite its checkered past. Kashuv said on Twitter, throughout his history, Harvard's faculty has included slave owners, segregationists, bigots, anti-Semitics. He added, if Harvard is suggesting that growth is impossible and that our past defines our future, then Harvard is an inherently racist institution, but I don't believe that. Whoa, okay. This kid is just, he, he is really not the smartest, the brightest, because, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think that throwing the past of the institution that you so desperately want to get into, I don't, I don't think throwing their past out there for the public to see is, um, I don't think that's the way to go, man. I don't think that's how you you get forgiveness, so you can get your admission back. Like bringing up their racist past and and all that stuff. I'm pretty sure Harvard doesn't want people to talk about that stuff. You know, trying to carve a new future just like you, right? So you're, you're kind of just digging yourself a more deeper hole here, kid. But let's keep reading. So throughout its history. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> Excuse me, man. So, I don't know if this is important or not, but it says, um, it says this kid pretty much is visibly outspoken, member of the hashtag never again movement, fellow Parkland students, David Hogg and McGonzalez, Cameron Caskey. He's been outspoken about his support for gun ownership while his classmates have called for more laws to be implemented in the wake of the February 2018 shooting in which... 17 people died oh wow okay so let's just slide down a little bit more here okay this is not important but it says while his classmates walked out of school in april 2018 oh okay so he went to the white house and his classmates are talking about gun reform and he's in support He's a conservative kid. Wow, he has 300,000 Twitter followers. He almost has half a million Twitter followers. What the? Okay. So this kid has a big social following. Okay. So let's, uh, let's keep on reading. So it says, A few weeks ago, 
The shove said he became aware that egregious and callous comments he and other classmates made privately years ago were being made public. He said, I immediately apologize, he said, saying he was embarrassed by the comments. He said the comments don't reflect who he is, and this past year has forced him to mature and grow. Okay, so, I mean, I get it. I get it. But, you know, saying I'm sorry and feeling bad and, and, and being embarrassed, I mean, it doesn't really fix everything. You know, sometimes it does. But in situations like this, just saying I'm sorry and feeling bad for your actions, it's just it does not work. But let's just go ahead and keep on reading here. He says he sees the world very differently through his eyes and he is embarrassed by the petty flampant kid represented in screenshots of the comment he added okay so i'm just gonna i'm trying to just breeze through this man because this is it's a lot you know but now i didn't want to make this like a, a 30 20 something minute video but pretty much says kashuv in his thread he posted on uh may 24th Letter from Harvard's Fitzsimmons saying the university had become aware of media reports discussing offensive statements allegedly authored by him. So it says the letter added that Harvard reserves the right to withdraw an offer of admission under various conditions, including if you engage or have engaged in behavior that brings into question your honest maturity and moral character. Shove said that in response to a request form excuse me, from the Harvard Admissions Committee, he wrote back with a full explanation, apology, and requested documents, and also sent an email to the school's Office of Diversity Education and Support. And, um, pretty, <laughs> this is funny. So, one department, the Diversity Education Department, pretty much made it seem like he was going to be admitted because it said, that they appreciated his thoughtful reflections and look forward to connecting with him upon his matriculation in fall 2020. So they gave him false hope. <laughs> they gave him false hope. But it said he requested a face-to-face uh, -face meeting with the Harvard committee, you know, looking for some possible reconciliation but they declined his request so basically one department gave him hope and and they just the committee said hell no <laughs> like no kid not happening so i'm gonna finish this up he said believe that institutions and people he says i believe excuse me god i'm just all over the place but i believe the institutions and people can grow i've said that repeatedly and in this isn't about me, it's about whether we live in a society in which forgiveness is possible or mistakes brand you irredeemably as Harvard has decided for me. Okay, so I'm just, I'm not even going to read anymore because it's a little bit more to read, but the kid makes valid points. You know, he makes some valid points. I'm not even going to lie. But, you know, he's saying if we're trying to see if we, we live in a society where you are branded by your past as re irredeemable well in fact i mean that is how the real world works because he's a young kid i mean he's trying to get into college so he's like what 18 now so i mean hey that that's really just how the cookie crumbles as they say i mean you very well can be dictated by your past it is a fact like which this this is why this ties in into my earlier upload because that kid right say he gets his mind right he matures he grows up you know from dancing on people's fucking tombstones for entertainment and gets himself right and he goes for his dream job but that dream job comes across that video in particular and and then shit they're not gonna hire him they're not gonna take him because of that they and the every institution employer has the right to deny you you know 
because it's just it's just this shit follows you man it follows you for the rest of your life like and i get it these kids think they have an immortality complex which i had it when i was a kid i was a victim of it as well you just do shit and you don't think that anything can happen but very well this shit can follow you man it, chasing cloud is not worth it but that's it guys thank you for watching if you're new to the channel go ahead and hit that subscribe button i would appreciate it it'll help me out a lot and until next time i'm out